Hey guys, so today I have kind of my part two of my year end favorites. And in this video, we're gonna be covering all of my non makeup beauty favorites. So, skincare, body care, hair care, nails. I don't normally do a non makeup favorites video, I don't think, but this year I just had a lot of really amazing discoveries that I just felt like it would be easiest to designate these types of products in their own video. So, let's go ahead and get started. Let's get started with a hair care favorite. So, one of the best things that happened in 2021 was that Garnier became cruelty free. And as soon as that news came out, I was so excited to try some of their hair care products specifically because I know so many people love their shampoos, conditioners, and I was especially excited to try their whole blends line because that is the line that so many people seem to love. And I ended up trying their Whole Blends Oat Delicacy Gentle Shampoo. The reason I chose this one was because it says it's for fine to normal hair, which I have. And it also said tested on sensitive scalp, which I'm not really sure what that means, but I do have a sensitive scalp. So the marketing got me on this and I'm so glad it did because I love this shampoo. This is my second bottle of it. It's like $4. I can pick it up at the grocery store. I can pick it up at whatever drugstore I'm at. And so I ended up then grabbing the conditioner version of this. And the conditioner is also so good. Like both of these together are just like the perfect shampoo and conditioner combo for my hair type. But also my boyfriend who has thicker, more like curly hair really likes these too. So even though they say fine to normal hair, I think they could work well for a lot of different hair types. And I'm just so, so excited about these. I don't normally get super excited about shampoos and conditioners. Normally, I just feel kind of neutral about all of them. None of them have ever really wowed me in the past, but these two, there's just something magical about these. And this has to be one of my favorite discoveries of the year. I'm so excited. I know that this shampoo also comes in a shampoo bar, but as far as I can tell, I would only be able to buy that on Amazon. And I really try not to buy on Amazon as much as humanly possible. And even though that might seem like a more sustainable option, I feel like it's really not. If I'm having to buy it online, it's probably gonna get shipped to me in like a bubble mailer, which is plastic, not really recyclable, versus this I can just go pick up at the store right down the street, and I think this actually is the more sustainable option for me personally. But if the shampoo bar does become more accessible, I would love to try it at some point. I've never had great luck with shampoo bars, especially with my sensitive scalp, but I would definitely be willing to try it at some point. Until then, this is working so well for me, and the bottle is also like easily recyclable. So, Oh, I forgot to mention the scent on these, but they smell so good. I'm not even sure how I would really describe the scent. It just smells clean, a little bit maybe coconutty, creamy, just oh, such a lovely scent. I'm just so excited that I found these. And as far as the scalp sensitivity goes, I don't feel like this irritates my scalp. It seems to almost kind of calm down my scalp and it just makes my hair feel so clean yet nourished at the same time. It's it's crazy. I don't know what's what kind of sorcery is going on in here, but it's working really well for me. <laughs> Another hair product that's on the opposite end of the price spectrum that I didn't discover this year. I actually, I think I tried this for the first time last year, but this year was when I really solidified that this is the best. And this is the Amika Soul Food Nourishing Hair Mask. This is like a $28 hair mask. And in the past, I've talked about the Eva NYC Therapy Session Mask being a good kind of alternative to this for a much better price and better value. And I have both of them right now. I've been kind of going back and forth between the two. And the longer I've used this one, I've realized more and more that this one really is much better than the Eva NYC one. As much as I want to believe that the Eva NYC one is like comparable to this one, this one really is so much better. I refuse to pay full price for this. I will definitely wait for a sale. I will definitely like search TJ Maxx high and low <laughs> to find a good deal on it because I will not pay $28 for a hair mask, but this really is the best hair mask and my boyfriend agrees. Again, we have two different hair types, but we both agree that this is just the best one that we've tried. Oh my God, it's wet from the shower, gross. But you can see we've used almost all of this. It smells so good. I love the scent of Amika products too. I like the scent of this more than the Eva NYC scent. It just smells, it smells like a salon quality hair product, which is what it is. I mean, I'm pretty sure they do sell Amika in some salons. It just, again, it just smells clean. It's just a good hair smell. So I, I just, I love this mask. I have so, I, I get so much joy out of using it. And when I do find a more affordable alternative to this, I will certainly let you, let you guys know. I still like the Eva NYC one. I still think that one's good. It's just 
having both of them now side by side being able to compare it just doesn't compare, you know? This one really is so much better. Okay, so let's talk some skincare favorites now. 2021 has been a big skincare year for me because I did start using topical tretinoin that was prescribed to me by my dermatologist. I've been <laughs> mentioning that all throughout the year. I have a video on my tretinoin skincare routine and I still use a pretty similar skincare routine to that video even though that was filmed back in the summer. But my top skincare line of 2021 was the Paula's Choice Skin Recovery line. This is a wonderful line of products. I've tried <laughs> several of them at this point. For any kind of skin barrier issue, whether you're on tretinoin or I bet if you're on Accutane it would be great, or you're just having a lot of dry skin, a lot of irritation, this line is amazing. They say it's for dry and very dry skin. I have combo skin and I love it. I don't think you have to have very dry skin to like this line. I think if you just have sensitive skin or if your moisture barrier is compromised for any reason, I think you would love this line. I would say my tip top favorite of the entire line, and this is probably my top skincare favorite of the year, is the Paula's Choice Skin Recovery Softening Cream Cleanser. For me, the number one key with my tretinoin journey has been using a non-foaming cream cleanser. Anytime I try to switch to a foaming cleanser, even if it's just like a very gentle one, it strips my skin like crazy and I have like a bout of dry skin for like three days. So this type of cleanser has been a must and this one is so, so good. I think the fear a lot of times with a non-foaming cleanser is that it's not going to clean your skin well enough, but this totally cleanses my skin so as effectively as any foaming cleanser I've ever used, but it's so gentle and it leaves my skin feeling moisturized. It doesn't leave it feeling stripped whatsoever. So this is the second bottle of this that I've had and this is, I don't know if you can tell, but this is the massive 16 fluid ounce size. It does come in a smaller size as well, but I just went ahead and got the big size because it was a slightly better value and I knew I was gonna use it. This is the only cleanser I've been using. In addition to, of course, like a cleansing balm because I do a double cleanse. Um, so that, this is like the MVP of the year for me. Highly, highly recommend that. Um, and I did also, I was curious to try their Resist Optimal Results Hydrating Cleanser because that's another non-foaming cleanser from their Resist line. I do have a little sample of that that I've been trying. I like that one too. Honestly, I think I could probably go either way, but I think I like the Skin Recovery one just a little bit better. It's even a little bit creamier, whereas the Optimal Results one is more of like a cream gel hybrid sort of texture. It doesn't foam at all, but I find this one even a little bit more nourishing. So that's why I like this one a little bit more, but they're both really good. I've also been loving the Enriched Calming Toner from the Skin Recovery line. For the past several years, I haven't even really used toners because I've just never really felt like they were necessary, but this, while it's not totally necessary, like I don't feel like this is a essential step in my routine. I do really enjoy using it. I find that it does like after I've rinsed off my face in the morning I apply this to like still damp skin and I just feel like it kind of replenishes my skin's moisture and it gets it ready for my serum. Then I like to go in with a hyaluronic acid serum while my skin is still wet with this and it just kind of seals everything in. Then I go in with a moisturizer. It's just it's a great experience. So if you're wanting to try a good hydrating toner this one is fantastic. And then their Hydrating Treatment Mask from the Skin Recovery line has also been a staple for me, especially as we've gotten into these colder months. And I cannot believe that this giant tube of this mask is only $24. This is essentially a leave-on mask, an overnight mask, and you get four fluid ounces. So this is like double the size of most moisturizers, and it's, it's $24, which is like... I don't even know, do they realize that they're only charging that much for this? Because that's a really good value for Paula's Choice. So that's amazing. I've also gone through two of the replenishing moisturizers this year from this line. That one is great. I, yeah, I really can't say enough good things about the skin recovery line from Paula's Choice. That's been my favorite skincare line of the year. Another skincare product favorite for me this year, and I don't have it anymore because I used it up and now I need to use up some of my other products in this category, but the 4th Ray Beauty BFD Cleansing Oil, that was the best like first cleanse, makeup removing cleansing oil that I've tried this year. It would just remove all my makeup, breaks it all down beautifully, and then it emulsifies so you're not left with like a film of oil on your skin after you rinse it off. It just rinses away with water and then I could go in with my next, my Paula's Choice cleanser. So that was such a great find this year. I cannot wait to have that back, but I have like three cleansing balms that I need to use up now. 
Ugh. And none of them are anywhere near as good as the Fourth Ray Beauty cleansing oil. So that was a great find this year. So while we're on the topic of skincare, let's go ahead and talk sunscreen. You guys know I'm a huge sunscreen fan. Um, I test a bunch of sunscreens every year for my yearly sunscreen roundup. I have another one coming up in 2022 that I'm already kind of pre-preparing for. And my number one face sunscreen of the year was the Kinship Self Reflect SPF 32. I also went through two tubes of that this year. That is such a good mineral sunscreen. And at this point with my skin, I've... I'm really sticking to mineral sunscreens because I just find that chemical sunscreens are irritating my skin too much. As much as I love chemical sunscreens, I think just while also using tretinoin, something about chemical sunscreens just does not get along with my skin. So the Kinship Self Reflect one really came in handy this year. Beautiful, glowy sunscreen. It's got a little bit of a tint to it, but it's more just there to kind of cancel out the white cast. So there's no white cast with it. Um, for a mineral sunscreen, it's a very elegant formula, so I enjoyed that so much this year. And then another mineral sunscreen favorite that I really fell in love with towards the end of the year was the Unsun Mineral Tinted Face Sunscreen with SPF 30. This is empty, I just used it up, but I was worried that they were discontinuing this. But then I saw on their Instagram that they actually came out, I think they're like re-releasing this product, and it previously only came in this shade, which is really like tinted for more medium to deep skin tones, but they came out with a light to medium version of this same exact sunscreen that I'm so excited to get my hands on. This is only $16, and it's a matte sunscreen, so it really does kind of lock down on your skin. But the magical thing about it is that it doesn't cling or, like, accentuate dry patches. It actually kind of smooths them over. So even, I would say even for dry skin, which right now I do have, this was working amazingly for me. I really miss it now. Um, and it works so well under makeup. It kind of, like, keeps your makeup lasting even longer than it otherwise would because it's got that kind of, I don't know, it's it like locks in to your face. It's so weird. So um, it is also water resistant, which is amazing. The only thing for me was that this shade was just way too dark. So I'm really excited now to be able to have a lighter version of it. And I'll probably include that new light shade in my um, upcoming sunscreen roundup for 2022, which will probably go up in I'm guessing April or May, we'll see. I mean, <laughs> that's quite far off, but I'm gonna start testing some in the earlier part of 2022. So I'm excited to try that one. Now, I did also wanna talk about some of the chemical sunscreens that I loved earlier this year, because earlier this year I was able to use them, but then once I started tretinoin, I, it just became harder and harder to use these because um, they irritate my skin, but they may not irritate your skin. And I do highly recommend chemical sunscreens if you don't want a white cast. I would say my two favorites this year were the Garnier Green Labs Pore Perfecting Canopy <laughs> Serum Cream. That's a long name, but this is so good. Another Garnier win. Very lightweight. It literally just feels like a moisturizer. The problem with this and most chemical sunscreens is that you can't get them near your eyes or they will sting your eyes or at least they do mine. So I would normally just put this all over my face except for the eye area and then I would go in with a mineral sunscreen around the eyes just so that I would still get some protection there which is kind of annoying to have to do both but this is an amazing chemical option. And then the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Face Cream with SPF 30. This was a new product that they launched this year. If you like their Holy Hydration cream, like the original Holy Hydration without SPF, this is basically the same thing but with SPF. Again, it just feels like a moisturizer. It's incredible. You don't feel like you're wearing sunscreen. And then actually, I'll go ahead and mention a third chemical face sunscreen favorite because I have it right here. And this is a great higher SPF option, the Pacifica SPF 55 CNC Sheer Face Serum. Another one that just feels like a moisturizer. Um, this does have a pretty strong scent. So, you know, it's just kind of like a beachy scent. I don't really know how else to describe it. If you're looking for something with higher SPF, this is great. So those are my three chemical face sunscreen favorites of the year. I wish I could still use them. And then the Unsun and the Kinship were my two mineral favorites. Now I'm really on a quest to find a good higher SPF mineral sunscreen for my face. Something with like SPF 50 or higher would be ideal because so far all my favorites are like SPF 30 and I would like to have something with higher SPF as an option as well. Okay, and then a body sunscreen favorite. This is such a good body sunscreen. Again, from Paula's Choice. This is their Extra Care Non-Greasy Sunscreen with SPF 50. You can use this on the face and body. I found it to kind of sting my face a little bit, so I just use it on the body. But on the body, I love it. For me, 
I'm kind of, my body and my face are opposites because I prefer mineral sunscreen on my face, but chemical sunscreen on my body. I just cannot stand the feeling of mineral sunscreens on my body. It doesn't matter how like sheer or like non-white casty they are, they still, I just hate that sticky heavy feeling. So this is so lightweight, it's unscented, and uh, it's just so easy to put on. It doesn't feel greasy or heavy at all. And it's also a really great value, again, for a Paula's Choice product. I think it's like, $17 around there for this big tube. Okay, I do have some more body care favorites, but before we get into those, I also want to mention a lip balm favorite this year. These I tried for the first time this year, but the Kopari Lip Glossies, these are so good. Um, totally live up to the hype. I know a lot of people love these. And for Kopari, these are actually pretty affordable. I think they're $13. So for like a Sephora lip balm, I feel like that's a pretty pretty good price and um, I've been working on this tube of the clear one for months now and I've still got quite a bit left I mean I've used a lot of it you can see but this has just been my nighttime lip balm recently and I don't like it quite as much as the Paula's Choice lip and body treatment balm that one is even a little bit better but this I like almost as much as that and it's a squeeze tube rather than a pot so you don't have to like dig your finger in there so I do prefer the application of this one and this just has such a nice, satisfying texture for a lip balm. True to the name, it does have a glossy finish, but it's not like overly glossy. It feels very smooth and it just makes your lips feel very pillowy and soft and smells like coconut. So I love the clear one for just like my nighttime lip balm. Maybe not for the winter, but all other times of year, this is perfectly good for nighttime. And then I also have actually a few like just laying all around my apartment in my purse of the tinted ones. This one is the birthday suit shade and it's got just like a nice kind of nude tint to it. It's a very soft tint, like, I mean, there's what that looks like. See, it does just have a little bit of a tint. This is a great like throw it in your purse type of lip balm because it kind of doubles as almost a lip gloss. It just feels so good. <laughs> so I love those and I'm very happy to have discovered these. I think this is just gonna be my go-to both daytime and nighttime lip balm. In addition to the Paula's Choice Lip and Body Treatment Balm, that one is like my heavy duty lip balm that like clears up any kind of chapped lips in five seconds, which I don't, again, I don't know how, I don't know how they do that, but some kind of sorcery must be involved. Okay, so getting into some of the body care favorites. This is another one that I used up and I don't have it on hand right now because I've yet to repurchase it. But another amazing cruelty-free win this year was EOS. EOS is another big drugstore brand that went cruelty-free this year, shortly after Garnier. And I discovered the most amazing body lotion from them. It's just their... I think it's called the Shea Better Body Lotion in the scent Vanilla Cashmere. Oh my goodness, that was the best smelling body lotion I've ever experienced. It smells, to me it smells exactly like, from my memory, Vanilla Bean Noel from Bath & Body Works. It's just a warm, cozy vanilla scent. They've got some other scents too that I'm interested in trying, but not only was the scent incredible, it also just had the most beautiful, like buttery, nourishing texture to it that didn't like sit on top of your skin or feel greasy or anything but it like it just leaves your skin feeling so so hydrated and I miss having that in my life I really want to go pick one up soon because it's just so good and it's like seven dollars the only annoying thing was that it got hard to get the last bit of product out at the bottom because it's such a thick body lotion in a pump bottle so like the pump kind of stopped working after a certain point. I saw they also have one in a squeeze tube, which I might try that next if they have that at Target or wherever I'm looking for it because um, that I think that's a much better delivery method of the product, but that was such a good body lotion. Okay, another, another body care product that I discovered kind of later on in the year from this brand Advanced Clinicals. This is their Body Bump Eraser. This has lactic and glycolic acid, which are AHA exfoliants. So this you can use on any kind of rough and bumpy area of your body, or if you have KP, like I know I have it on the back of my arms, which is basically just kind of like bumpy skin, you know, like they call it like chicken skin sometimes. It just feels like bumpy. This will clear that up in a matter of days. <laughs> it is incredible and it is you get this massive tube that will last you a lifetime <laughs> for a, a pretty affordable price. So if you're looking for a KP solution, this is it. I had never really tried anything for my KP before because I just kind of, I don't know, I just had never like prioritized taking care of it, I guess, but this um, did the trick. So 
yeah, it's magical. Another thing that I feel like kind of defined 2021 for me was that I really got into fragrance this year. I had just never really made much of an effort to get into fragrance because I guess it's just expensive and I don't know, I just hadn't really thought about it much, but for some reason this year I just kind of wanted to try start experimenting with different fragrances and I had so many that I could have mentioned in this video, but I forced myself to narrow it down to three. <laughs> so um, my first kind of fragrance purchase of the year was the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Crush Cheirosa 62 body spray. This, I already knew I loved the scent of this from just having tried the Boom Boom Cream in the past. This is the same scent as the Boom Boom Cream and this just smells so good. I'm wearing this now. I'm actually wearing two of these now, kind of layered, but it's got notes of notes of pistachio, almond, heliotrope, jasmine petals, vanilla, salted caramel, and sandalwood. This is just a lovely, warm, cozy, gourmand kind of scent. I would definitely recommend smelling it. I don't recommend ever like blind buying perfumes just because you just never know <laughs> what you're gonna think of something, but if you can get your hands on a sample of like the Boom Boom Cream or anything like that, a lot of people love this scent. I love it. I think it's just, it's just yummy. It just makes me smell delicious and <laughs> I just, like anytime I see this, I like walk past it, I keep it like on top of my dresser. I wanna, I wanna spray some on because it's just, it's so yummy. And then the other fragrance I'm wearing in addition to that right now, this is so, so good. This is from the brand The Seven Virtues, and it's the Santal Vanille scent. Is it Vanille or Vanille? I think it's Vanille. This has grown on me more and more ever since I got it, and now this is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. And I've smelled a lot of fragrances this year because I got so many little sample sprays of so many different fragrances, and this one is so good. I feel like I have never smelled anything like this and I have just the rollerball and normally I don't like rollerballs but this actually I feel like lasts really well on my skin so eventually I will probably purchase the full size spray of this. The key notes are myrrh, vanilla, and sandalwood. This is also kind of spicy like I swear I smell some kind of black pepper or cardamom in here. There's like a sharpness to it but it's and then it's just like creamy and smooth like this just makes me feel like I am wrapped in like a cashmere blanket <laughs> curled up on the couch with a good book. Like, I don't think there's any other scent like this in the world. I mean, I haven't smelled them all, but this is just something special. Um, I like this better than Vanilla Woods, which is more of like a straight vanilla. I mean, it has more complexity to it, but this is just next level. Really, really good. And then my third fragrance favorite of the year is from Pinrose. This is another brand that I tried for the first time this year. I got their whole like sampler pack. So I've smelled a bunch of their perfumes and my favorite is Mystical Misfit. This one, I ended up buying the full size of it when I found it on sale because upon first sniff, I knew that this was going to be a favorite for a long time. To me, this smells like the holidays. It just smells like joyful times, even though I think you could wear this year round. Like it's a very fresh, lively scent that there's just something, there's almost like an evergreen sort of note to it that makes me think of Christmas time. But I think this is something I'll wear all year long. It just smells amazing. The bottle is super cute too. So those are my three <laughs> fragrance favorites of the year. I do have a video on my entire perfume collection if you wanna watch that and hear more about more of my favorites, but I had to narrow it down for this video because I couldn't I couldn't go on and on for too long <laughs> or because I don't know, something about me and fragrance, like I can just talk for hours about it, so I have to I have to rein it in. I have to calm down. <laughs> I'm surprised it took me this long to get into fragrance because I've always been a very scent driven person. Like even as a little kid I was always like pointing out what I smelled, you know, and it would be like the most obscure thing. Like my parents always say, I would just walk around saying, I smell lettuce or I smell butter. Like just <laughs> the most random, like I have always had a very strong sense of smell too. Sometimes that is a curse, but sometimes it's a good thing. <laughs> but I've just really been enjoying getting into fragrances this year. So that has been a highlight of the year for me. So the last non-makeup beauty favorite of the year for me has been a nail favorite and it is Press On Nails. It was really at the very end of 2020 that I started getting into Press On Nails, but they have been a favorite for me all year long and I don't really see myself ever going back to regularly painting my fingernails because unless I just find some kind of like magical nail polish or top coat that doesn't chip in two days, maybe I will, but 
I just, I hate the hassle of painting my nails. It takes so much time. It's, it's just such an annoying process. And then they chip within a few days, so it just feels like a waste. But with these press-on nails that I'm about to talk about, I can get a good solid one to two weeks of wear with them, which is just amazing. So these are the Clutch Nails. This is my favorite nail brand. Um, it's one of the few cruelty-free press-on nail brands. Specifically, the thing I love the most about Clutch is the glue is the strongest, most heavy-duty nail glue you will ever find. The glue is really the secret. I mean, I could use any brand of nails themselves, but the glue, I will always use Clutch glue because I feel like it's just super glue or something in there. Like, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but it works so well. I mean, these nails are stuck on there. Usually I'll get about a week out of them and then maybe one or, the, one or two of the nails might pop off and I'll just glue them back on and I get another like four or five days out of them. So I've been able to stretch them out for two weeks, sometimes longer, but then it's like, okay, like it's probably time to take these off. But some of their styles are not my favorite. Like right now I have on the French girl nails and I do feel like these still look like press on nails. This is just like your classic French tip nail. But I wish that the nail bed were more translucent because it's just like a solid light pink color that I just feel like looks very obvious. Like that's obviously not my real nail. But others of their styles look amazing. Like they look like I actually went and got my nails done at a salon. Usually I stock up around Black Friday because they'll have like a sale where all of their nail sets are $5, which is an amazing deal. So that's what I've done this year and last year. And then I'm kind of stocked up for the year. I've also tried the Ardell nails this year, and while the nails themselves are nice, the glue just does not work well, so I would just use those with the clutch glue. But press-on nails have been a huge win for me. I might do a video on like how I do them. Maybe I'll do that as like an Instagram reel at some point. I don't think I would do it on YouTube, but I have had a few requests to do that, so I may do an Instagram reel just showing kind of my tips and tricks and the process of doing it. But yeah, I think that's everything. It's always fun to talk about the non-makeup side of beauty because these are the products that don't really get talked about as much on my channel and just on YouTube in general. So these are the things I've been loving this year. I also just yesterday posted my best makeup of the year video, so I will leave that linked for you as well. But otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you all tomorrow in my next video. Bye.